12, we have to subtract the fractions. It says, do not use a calculator, show all the steps in your working. Now, you are allowed to use a calculator. No one's going to disqualify you in the exam if you're using a calculator, but you do have to show all the steps in your working out in order to get full marks. And always check to see if your final answer is in its lowest terms. So before we can subtract these two fractions, we have to turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. So if I do that first, I get 5 over 3. Now, before we can subtract two fractions, we have to make sure there is a common denominator. So the number underneath must be the same first. So we can use a common denominator of 15 because both of those numbers fit exactly into the number 15. So the second fraction hasn't changed. It's still 11 fifteenths. But the first fraction has changed. To get from the number 3 to the number 15, we are multiplying by the number 5. So we have to do the same with the numerator. We have to multiply this number by 5 as well, giving us 25. Now that we've got the common denominators, we're allowed to subtract these two fractions. The denominator stays the same, and on the top we have to do 25 minus 11, which is 14. And we can't simplify that fraction any further. Okay, so that will give you full marks in the exam. Number 13, okay, they've given us a list of different numbers, and from this list we first have to pick out a cube number. So a cube number is a number that we can cube root. So the cube root symbol on the calculator looks like that. So when you cube root the number, it should give you a positive integer, like a whole number. If we cube root 343 in the calculator, it gives us the number 7. That means 343 is a cube number. So there's the answer to part A. Now, for part B, it says find the smallest number. So, really, we need to look at the negative numbers, and the smallest one is this one, which is negative 11. Now, for part C, a natural number is a positive integer. So, it has to be a positive whole number. Well, straight away, I can see this one, 343, so that is a natural number. In number 14, we've got a few column vector questions. In part A, we have to add the two column vectors together. So all you need to do is add the top two numbers. So 3 plus negative 1 is 2. And then add the bottom numbers. So 2 plus 5 is 7. And that one's done. In part B, we have to subtract. So we're going to start by subtracting the top numbers. 6 take away 4 is 2. And then be careful underneath because we've got a double minus. 3 minus minus 2 is the same as 3 plus 2, which is 5. And finally, in part C, we have to multiply this column vector by the number 4. So 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. And 4 multiplied by 5 is 20. Okay, in question 15, we're given a regular pentagon. So regular just means that all the sides are equal in length. Okay, so I've just put these little dashed lines on there to show that. Okay, and a pentagon is a five-sided shape. So they give you that diagram there. We have to work out this angle here, D, and they tell us that AB is a line of symmetry. So that means it's cut directly down the middle, okay? It's symmetrical on either side. So before we can work out the value of D, it would be useful to know what all the angles are in a regular pentagon. So to work out the sum of interior angles in any shape, we have this formula here, N minus two times by 180. Now, N is the number of sides. So in a pentagon, we have five sides, so I'm going to change N to five. So, if I work out what's inside the brackets, 5 minus 2 is 3. And if I times by 180, I get 540 degrees. So, all the angles inside any pentagon always add up to 540 degrees. Now, because it's a regular pentagon, it means all of these angles are equal. They're all the same. 
So from there, we can work out what one angle is inside a regular pentagon. We can divide that number 540 by 5. Okay, we're sharing it equally between those five angles. So fives into five goes once, fives into four, none, carry the four, fives into 40 goes eight. So all of these angles are 108 degrees. So we're almost there, okay, there's one more step, okay. We have to work out the value of D, and D is only half of one of those angles. So the final step, is to divide that number 108 by 2, okay? And if you do that, you get 54 degrees. So that is the final answer, that is the value of D. In number 16, we've got a little bit of Pythagoras. It's a right angle triangle and we're working out a side using two sides. So remember Pythagoras' theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A, B and C are just the sides. C is always the hypotenuse, which is the longest side, opposite the right angle. And A and B, it doesn't really matter which way round you label those two. So if we substitute what we know into Pythagoras' theorem, instead of saying A squared, we can write down 8 squared. B squared, well, we don't know B, so that one just stays the same. And instead of C, we can write 18, so we've got 18 squared. So I've just plugged those values into Pythagoras' theorem. Now we have to try and solve that equation to find B. So I need to move that 8 squared to the other side of the equation, so it changes to a minus 8 squared. And then, to get rid of this squared, the opposite of squaring is to square root. So if I square root the left-hand side, that just disappears. And then I must also square root the right-hand side. So if you pop that in the calculator, you get 16.1245. Not forgetting, you have to round to three significant figures. One, two, three. Always check the fourth one. It doesn't round the one up, so we're left with 16.1 centimetres. Okay, number 17. It's the rules of indices. Hopefully you remember the rules. Whenever there are brackets, you have to multiply the powers together. So for the first one, five times two is 10. And for part B, when you're multiplying, you have to add the powers. So to start with, we just multiply the two numbers, just as you normally would. So four multiplied by five is 20. Now, if we look at the X values, we need to add the powers, so 3 plus 2 is 5. And then if we look at the y values, well just before I do those ones, I'm just going to write a 1 there and also there. You have to remember that y is the same as y to the power of 1. So when I multiply the y values together and I add those powers, 1 plus 1 is 2 but you probably already knew that y times y is y squared. Okay, so that's the final answer for number 17. Now in question number 18, we have to solve the simultaneous equations, so we have to work out the values of both x and y. Now there are several ways of solving simultaneous equations. In my answer, I'm going to start by multiplying the top equation by 2. So that will give me a 6x here to match the 6x underneath. So when I multiply all of this equation by 2, I get 6x plus 8y equals 12. Now the other equation stays the same, but I'm still going to write it out again just over here so that they're underneath each other. Now if I subtract these two equations, I can eliminate the 6x's. 6x take away 6x is 0. Okay, so by subtracting those two equations, I can eliminate x and it will give me an equation with just y values so I can solve and find the value of y. So I'm going to subtract everything else. So 8y take away negative 1y is the same as 8y plus y, which is 9y. And 12 take away negative 15 is the same as 12 plus 15, which is 27. So maybe you've spotted the value of y already. If we divide by 9 on 
both sides, we can find the value of y. So 27 divided by 9 is 3. So now that we've found our y value, we can substitute this back into one of the original equations in order to find the value of x. Now, it doesn't matter which equa equation you use, okay? So I'm just going to take the top one. It really doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to write that out again. And now I need to change the y value to 3. So instead of writing 4y, I'm going to write 4 brackets 3. Because that means I'm multiplying them together. If you prefer, you can write 4 times 3 instead of the brackets. They mean the same thing, okay? Now, 4 times 3 is 12, so I can just work that out. And now I'm just solving this equation to find the value of x. So I need to get rid of this positive 12, so I'm going to subtract 12 on both sides. On the right hand side, if I work this out, 6 take away 12 is negative 6. And the final step is to divide both sides of the equation by 3, so that x is equal to negative 6 divided by 3, which is negative 2. So we found the values of both x and y, so we have solved the simultaneous equations.